I am honestly <laughs> in awe of how chiseled your jawline is. What's what's like a hard substance? Is diamond considered to be a hard substance? I would. It's the hardest. Yeah, I substance. think it is, right? Yes. The hardest substance. Yeah. yeah. I swear your jawline is so chiseled that you can easily <laughs> slice through diamond as well. So I'll be honest. All of those examples, reaching out for that uh, candy bar, or just feeling completely exhausted <laughs> down in the doldrums, I've experienced it all. There have been several days where I just have felt like I'm just going to lay on the couch when I come back home. and switch on netflix and not do anything and the article had had mm. this headline a very compelling and captivating headline which read the fitness trainer who makes lifting weights look sexy so what do what do you think about that oh, wow. that headline do you think that's like an apt description so i certainly do not think that's an apt description because it sells shweta short because according to me not only is she the trainer who makes lifting weights look sexy she's india's sexiest trainer period Honestly, before going into the conversation, I thought that it's going to be very hard for me to focus on what she's saying because of her incredibly distracting good looks. But her speaking is as good as her looks are, because of which it's impossible to not listen to her with rapt attention. In this conversation, Shweta and I spoke about Shweta's workout plan, her diet. the golden advice that she has for people who are looking to get serious about fitness because uh, you know naya saal aane wala hai what you can do in case you hate going to the gym as well as a whole lot more that you can see in the time stamps below you know jis tarah exercise shuru karne ke pehle warm up karna padta hai usi tarah bhai ne fitness ki baatein shuru karne ke pehle thoda flirting ke sath warm up kiya you know because that's how bhai rolls uh, not to mention the fact that she is india's sexiest trainer after all yes yes i know that she's married I'm I'm saying yeah. this to you you know while being cognizant yeah. of the fact that you're yeah. happily married but this haircut looks very <laughs> very very elegant on you elegant is the word yes. that comes to my mind when um, when I see this haircut That's fears. so kind thank you so much man and the cap look is you're rocking it i love it <laughs> you know to be to be to be completely honest i'm only doing yeah. this because this mm. was about two and a half or three weeks back i had the worst mm. haircut of my life shweta the worst oh, haircut of my life and i my feel so mortified nightmare. walking around no. in public with my hair so so this has become a regular fixture you know the only Got time it. i'm not wearing when i'm going off to sleep or when i'm yeah. sleeping otherwise yeah. this is a part of my head 24/7 <laughs> you know in your instagram feed there was one post mm. uh, um which was like a screenshot or a screen grab of an article that was dedicated okay. to you so this was quite some time back mm. and the article had had mm. this headline a very compelling and captivating headline which read the fitness trainer who makes lifting weights look sexy So what do what do you think about that oh, wow. that headline? Do you think that's like an apt description? <laughs> well, well, it was worth posting about because obviously I was like, wow, this is new. But uh, no, I don't think it's an apt uh, discussion. Uh, description. I I think lifting weights are sexy anyway. So uh, whether I'm doing it or uh, anyone is doing it, I think it's a sexy thing to do. So yeah, sure, I'll I'll own it for now. But yeah, now that you brought that up, I, I actually remember remember posting about that and being very very. Uh, you're know, flattered by it what's yeah. your advice for people who want to become fitter who want to become more physically active but at the same time don't want to go about doing so through the gym route because they might be finding Absolutely. it too drab and boring the gym is not definitely not the only way to get fit so i would say definitely find something that motivates you to get up and go out and that could be a run in the park it could be a pick up game of basketball with your friends badminton in the alley the gym to some people or to a lot of people can be fun i mean i think it really boils down to the instructor if you're using a personal trainer if they can change up the program the monotony was what killed me initially but uh, yeah there are there are multiple options today and there always has been to be quite honest but um uh, specifically today because there are you know uh, groups that you can go and play sport with um and with the gym there are so many um instructors now that have Uh, propped up who are very qualified who will give you workouts based on what interests you keep the motivational levels up so yeah i would say just go out there try different things and you will find something that you know sort of excites you and motivates you to wake up and guess what after 3 or 4 months or a year of doing one thing maybe you want to switch it up and i'm always encouraging of people to switch things up on a weekly basis to be quite honest i play three different sport and i hit the gym uh and that's because my attention span can be quite short and i can get bored <laughs> with one type of activity it's a wonder i've been married for 10 years but 
I'm, 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 I'm pretty, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's that's music to the ears of your husband, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> He's learned to deal with me. Let's just say that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it it can get monotonous. Even something like sport, where every game is different. You know, it's reactive. So, you know, one day uh, you have a great game and you've scored many goals. Perhaps the next day you've not had a great game. But after a period of time, even that, if you're playing the same sport, it can get monotonous and you might want to change it up. You might want to try something different, different sport, a different activity, maybe the gym. So you need to just figure out, you know, when those motivational levels or uh, start to, to drop, how can you sort of pick yourself up again? How can people start their respective fitness journeys? Um, and you may have answered this question partly already. You yeah. talked about the fact that, you know, these days, there are lots of options that you have, which can, of course, be a, yeah. a big boon, but it can also be a curse mm -hmm. only because when you have confusing, so many options, yeah. it can be confusing. You end up experiencing a lot of decision fatigue. Okay, so what do I commit okay. to first? What do I start with? You yeah. also said that, you know, experiment with, with as many different forms of physical activity as possible. See what you like. You know, you can discard the ones that you don't like and then gravitate towards yeah. the ones that you end up liking. So so would would you say when you're starting out, should you experiment as much as possible just to, you know, kind of see what uh, what uh, pleases you yeah so for some people they will need to experiment quite a bit okay. uh, mm -hmm. to figure out before they land upon the thing that uh, you know they, they that suits them the most for a lot of people they're more inclined towards you know the safe environment of a gym rather than you know running around uh, chasing a ball and a ball coming flying at you uh, which can be intimidating for a lot of people they like you know just spending time you know unplugging and going for that run so, so i think with most people, they know what they are uh, naturally more inclined towards. With some people, it can be just, you know, I'm, I really don't know. So I'm just going to try a bunch of things. And I would encourage you to do that because I'm pretty sure there's going to be one thing that you're going to enjoy out of the 10 things that you try if you end up trying 10 things. Um, it's always good to, you know, um, if, if you are in that position where you really don't know where do I start, it's always good to maybe grab a friend and go along with uh, with him or her. Uh, sort of, you know, helps you so, um, uh, do something with a friend that ends up being fun because that fun aspect is, I think, incredibly important to keep the motivation up, to keep you coming back. Um, so I, I all, you know, with Sisters and Sweat, it's a community-based uh, thing that I've initiated that I've started. And I've found, like, the reason the girls come back beyond the, the fact that, you know, we're providing this space and the coaches is that, you know, they've made friends uh, in, in the session and now they want to come meet them next week and have fun with them. So I think that's a great way to sort of um, pick, uh, pick with uh, a bunch of people or another person. Uh, and then that has, it keeps it sticky as well. Otherwise you could just, if there's no accountability, you don't have to tell your friend, uh, I'm, I'm, I'll see you tomorrow or whenever you just won't show up sometimes. Yeah. You know, you talked about the yeah. fact that when you're, Sometimes, even when you haven't started your fitness journey, you might you might have like a natural inclination towards something. Yeah. Like I'll tell you, you know, yeah. for the first 26 years of my life, my natural inclination was lying down on the couch and smashing pizza all day long. You know, that was my natural inclination <laughs> before before yeah. I finally woke up, woke up and smelled the coffee. And yeah. I was like, you know, I have to do something about myself. Uh, yeah. But and, so I'm pretty sure you must have started with something, but your fitness yeah. uh, routine has evolved over the years. Currently, as sure. things stand, what does your fitness routine look like? So currently, as things stand, I have uh, a combination of things that I do, which work best for me. Um, I have a few days of weight training um, in, in the gym in my apartment. And then I go out three times a week to play a sport. Uh, once uh, on a Friday morning, it's, it's uh, basketball. On a Sunday uh, morning, it's an outdoor run with the community. Uh, Tuesday evening, it's football. Uh, and then the days in between is when I will go up and lift some weights. So for me, it's very important just to sort of have that outlet to expend my energy, really. I enjoy sport the most, undoubtedly. But I've also, over the years, really started to enjoy the solitude of working out on my own. Mm -hmm. Sometimes with a friend is also fine, but it's just, uh, for me, a sort of meditation. Uh, yeah. You know, where I go sort of inside my body, feel very connected to my body. Um, and it's, you know, it, and it's something that's happened over time. Um, like I said, the first day in the gym, I actually hated it because I was a kid that liked to chase a ball to score goals. <laughs> I like to be reactive. And suddenly there's this piece weight rack in front of me. And I'm like, <laughs> it's not reacting to me. Like, where's the interaction here? <laughs> but you, you'll figure it out. And also, I think once you see the changes in the way you feel, the way you look, the way you 
carry yourself, it becomes sort of addictive, right? And of course, any sort of extreme addiction is bad, including, you know, uh, training too hard, etc. But I believe at, you know, 38 now, I have found my balance for what works for me. And that will keep evolving. I'm sure in a few years, perhaps I might not be as inclined to play this sport. I might change it to another sport. I might not be inclined to you know, train five days a week. I might break that down to three days a week. It might change. And I'm always open to that. I think at this point, I just feel very connected to my physical being. And um, that helps me understand what I want to do. And I let my body sort of decide what the training um, for the week, for the month, is going to be like there's no pressure as such so so you you got your age wrong you meant 28 right (laughs) (laughs) sure yes (laughs) well honestly i i feel 28 i mean i don't i can't i mean i I think it was very recently it was a big mistake somebody asked me you know um oh we were talking about something i was like yeah 28 i feel and they were like you mean 38 I was like, oh, yeah, right. Uh, But honestly, it hasn't, like, if anything, I'm feeling more energetic than I ever have. I'm feeling more, um, you know, strong, uh, feeling more fit. Um, And yeah, it's been a journey. So I, I, at least at this point, I don't think, you know, uh, uh, the age thing is, is a factor at all for me. But I've been very, very consistent in staying active. I think you know life, if yeah. they if they, if they make like a sequel on uh, the curious case of Benjamin Button, then you'll be the protagonist, <laughs> <laughs> defying well, defying I, the I... the law of aging. <laughs> well, I hope they do make the sequel then or the prequel. <laughs> but but yeah. you know it's very interesting that you mentioned that uh, now you've developed this uh, this. Uh, inclination for lifting weights by yourself or working out by yourself uh, because you enjoy the solitude because the solitude for you is like a form of meditation you know I will definitely carve out that segment that clip and show it to my mom my mom is an orthodox gen and I absolutely love her to shreds and she keeps badgering me to visit the temple every single day because (laughs) it's a very meditative experience and I tell her mom with due respect to you you know the gym (laughs) The gym is my temple. You know what the temple for, uh, like what what the temple means to you. The gym means to right. me. It's a very meditative experience for me. But she doesn't seem to understand Absolutely. that. You know, she doesn't seem uh, yeah. seem to uh, see the parallel. So I'll definitely show this <laughs> to her. Maybe yeah. you know this coming Bless from your a, mom. Yeah. A, a certified yeah. expert. Maybe she thinks okay. Now yeah. there's finally some credibility <laughs> in, in what you say. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, and, and you know what, uh, Anubhav, I've spoken to quite a few people now over the course of these 10, 10 years and try to understand what sort of break. And for a lot of people, it is that. It's just coming, uh, stealing themselves away from the madness of their day, of their, uh, you know, their lives and having that time to themselves. And it's a deeply meditative experience for me, especially to just connect with my body. Uh, you know, whether it's, you know, after you've finished a set, you put that weight down, you, you feel this... I don't know, uh, this deep connection with your body. Uh, you feel like you've done something good for your body. And when you, when you, you know, it's sort of like um, uh, this feeling of, you know, you've done something good and um, uh, you're celebrating your body. It, 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 there's gratitude for uh, your physical ability. Uh, and then when you carry yourself post-workout or, you know, during the day that you're, you're, you're walking with a little bit more confidence. Exactly, exactly. Um, and I think that, yeah, it's such a ripple effect, right? It's not yeah. just about, you know, I, I, I look in the mirror and I'm like, yeah, you're looking good, you know? It's yeah, not that yeah. at all, really. It, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, maybe it's part of that also. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, primarily just feeling really good about yourself and doing good, exactly. something good for yourself. Exactly. Yeah. That, that feel-good factor, yeah. which is essential. Um, yeah. It's it's funny because you know when I first started out, it was mainly for like yeah. the, the vanity reasons. Oh, I want to look of course. much better physically. And sure. of course, that's still that's still like an element of it. That's still a part of it. Uh, um, yeah. And uh, and there's nothing wrong in that. I feel. Not but wrong. now it's it's become it's become more so for that that mental feel good factor. You know that the rush of Absolutely. endorphins that you experience. Absolutely. And when you're walking out, as you said, you know, you just walk out with this swagger or you just walk out feeling good about yourself as if you've That's accomplished yeah. something and you just, Correct. it prepares you much better for the rest of the challenges that lie ahead, you know, Absolutely. during the day or the week that lies ahead. And so, uh, yeah. so yeah, so, so that way it, it strengthens your mental fortitude a lot. Uh, Absolutely. It's a form of well. self-love if you ask me and you yeah, talk yeah. a lot about mental yeah. wellness today and, you know, treating your body right is a form of self-love and helps you sort of like take care of your, your mental state as well, you know? So it kind of like ticks two boxes, uh, physically you're taking care of yourself and mentally it's addressing a lot of issues as well. Yeah. 
yeah yeah two birds yeah. one stone as they say mm-hmm. you 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 mentioned that you know now more so than ever before you feel a lot more connected with your body you talked about the fact that you feel as young as you've ever felt you said you feel a lot stronger now how do you still do it given the demands of entrepreneurship because often times when you might be down in the doldrums when your stress levels may yeah. be high when you haven't quite slept all that well it can be very easy for you to reach out for a pick me up in the form of like a candy or a, a chocolate or not yeah. work out only because you might be short in terms of time because you have so many entrepreneurial right. commitments so right. how do you still yeah. juggle both yeah so i'll be honest all of those examples reaching out for that uh, candy bar or just feeling completely <laughs> exhausted down in the doldrums i've experienced it all and the truth is ever since i you know this is the sisters in sweat project for me has really sort of taken off and it's become quite demanding there have been several days where i just have felt like i'm just going to lay on the couch when i come back home and switch on netflix and not do anything so it has sort of like uh, altered uh, the if if you will the um regularity of my workouts but i am paying respect to the fact that i'm also so uh, heavily invested in this project and it's taking quite a bit out of me that on the days where i need that absolute break i will take it whereas before i would power through i'm like okay i've had a pretty relaxed day let's just go and do something in the gym today i uh, respect my body and myself enough to say that okay today has been a really really hard day shwets and it's okay not to do anything to just relax because that's equally important uh but somehow i make sure that in the week that i'll get my three days of a workout at least and you know there have been quite a few weeks in the past 3 to 4 years where i've only managed three days of a workout as be- as opposed to at least five to six days uh and that's fine you know uh because entrepreneurship is extremely demanding and to have that sort of demand on your body on top of that to sort of hit the gym hit it hard or play a sport every day is can be unrealistic you know so let's pay attention to where we are in our lives and if if your life uh life and lifestyle right now is extremely demanding you'd have to balance it out somewhere and to say that i'm going to continue to train at the level that i used to when i was well, in my case you know fitness instructor that i just had to deliver sessions and then you know i'm a free bird um is unrealistic and unfair to you and at the end of the day it's just going to compound that stress factor and you're going to have a complete breakdown so yeah. when you need to yeah. slow down allow yourself to do that because you know i always have um, you know this uh, uh, timeline i'm like okay, for the next 5 to 6 years i'm going to put all my energies into this and make the best i can out of it but i am going to make sure that i get in my you know 3 days in which which most people i would say no matter how busy you are you can find you know 40 minutes three times a week to get in a decent workout and if you're somewhat mindful of your diet you will be fine um and yeah does that mean that it takes you know your regular fitness routine as it was before might take a little bit of a hit sure it will but what's wrong with that that's okay you can't be you can't possibly do it all and you know stand tall so allow yourself to sit down when you need to superb and i think you yeah you, I, i i can't sum it up any better than than you did um it's a it's a balancing act like you said i think sometimes yeah. you have to accept the fact that you won't be able to win every single battle but you can still yeah. win a majority of the battles which can which can ensure that you end yeah. up winning the war right you don't necessarily have to Absolutely. win every single battle to win the war and Absolutely. it's it's something that i'm realizing only now uh, and i've realized mm. this the hard way because you know as a hyper perfectionist i've mm. i've always felt that oh i have to hit x number of workout sessions uh, every single week come hell or high water i have to yeah. eat clean 99 or 100% of the time and as you said what happens is you might be able to sustain that for a few days maybe a few weeks as well but then yeah. when 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 you hit that that roadblock when you crash it's a it's yeah. a massive crash and so what happened with me you know like a, a a personal story because i was so pedantic so anal so rigid with the way mm. uh, w- with my diet like i developed yeah. an eating disorder like i felt like there were certain substances that i felt were out of bounds like i cannot yeah. do that but as soon as you label something as being completely out of bounds then because yeah. you consider that to be something that's scarce so when you do yeah. come across it your body you tells go. you or your mind tells you you know just stock up on this or load up on this yeah. as much as possible Absolutely. because you never quite know or you never know when your next encounter with this item that you find delicious will will happen and so now i've become yeah. a lot more self loving where i tell myself like yeah. you know what if i want to treat go for it uh yeah 
and instead of practicing complete abstinence, abstinence you know go for yeah. moderation and i honestly think moderation yeah. is a very underrated skill i find moderation to be harder than complete abstinence but it's something that i'm no, actually absolutely. practicing a lot more of so would love to like get your thoughts yeah. you know on this moderation versus complete abstinence thing because yeah. because on on youtube you find all these motivational videos you hear all these stories and i'm pretty sure a lot of them are glorified they're fabricated mm. of these people who who are disciplined 100% of the time and so people uh, like uh, laymen and lay women might come across those videos and feel as if oh they have to replicate something similar as well if they want to reach like the zenith of success when it comes to fitness um correct yeah. and they end up being misguided so what's what's your yeah. take on this yeah i mean uh, you know just to go back to your uh, to the point that we were talking about uh you know trying to get those uh, maximum number of workouts and you know completely abstaining from certain foods etc uh, and when you do you just go crazy on it what you're doing essentially when you sort of like completely abstain is uh it's almost or, or with the workouts and you set high such a high bar for yourself and you've had like a really busy day and you just can't possibly push yourself to do a workout it becomes i i feel i didn't go for my workout today and that becomes a negative reinforcement right. and that's why i'm saying you know set set a minimum bar which you know is realistic and even if that at in your current condition is two workouts a day uh, a week or one workout a week let that be it so you know if you manage to get two or three or four uh, more workouts in the week that's you you can reward you can feel rewarded for it right like it's a positive reinforcement as opposed to i didn't do five and so mm-hmm. i only managed one and now it's just all negative in your head um with regards to moderation you're absolutely right it is the hardest thing i think it's a journey to arrive there as well uh, even for me much like you i never sort of i don't, I don't think i had an eating disorder but there was a time when i became a fitness instructor and at, at, at that point the industry was filled with people who looked a certain way uh, i mean i was one of 35 male instructors i was the only female instructor everybody was big um big muscles and i was you know a petite uh, girl who didn't have that sort of uh, and so i was like okay i'm going to try and develop those muscles and look the part um long story short um i think that that approach is 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 you know headed for failure right to find your balance to understand what your body type is and what your sort of uh, middle ground is as far as food workouts is a journey and it, it for me it's been a 10 year journey okay and i have been focused on fitness for for at least 10 years full time and before that of course i played sport so i would say give yourself that much time or more as as much time as you need to figure out where that balance lies for you where you know there is nothing that's completely out of bounds nothing should be out of bounds maybe some class a drugs perhaps but <laughs> besides that i think you know everything if you enjoy something you should be allowed to have it but sometimes i guess some people find it uh, to be a slippery slope and you start one you have one chip and it you, before you know it two bags down right um and maybe during that brief period you will practice abstinence right for the, in that but eventually to have to know that you're going to reintroduce it back in into your life but in moderation as in when you feel comfortable as in when you feel stronger mentally to do that as well yeah yeah right uh and like i said it is a journey to find moderation and i think it's it's the the most important journey to go on as far as your fitness uh, and your diet is concerned uh Absolutely. but it yeah, yeah so don't rush yourself into Uh, yeah like i said abstinence sometimes is necessary especially when you have maybe a, a, a medical condition where you're obese and you need to sort of absolutely cut cut out uh, certain food groups if you um but at the end of the day to just have that base level fitness you need to find your moderation uh, and that differs from person to person really yeah 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 i th- i think i mean some golden nuggets of wisdom in there a couple of things that have helped me a lot is a uh, one i i keep telling myself that you know it's better to be consistently good than occasionally great so that's Absolutely. that's that's one reminder oh, i love um, that yeah that, that helps me a lot and the second thing that helps me is i've changed or I'm in the process of changing my relationship with food you know because yeah. earlier i would tell myself if it's something say unhealthy in front of me i would tell myself anubhav you cannot have that but now instead of yeah. telling myself i cannot have something i tell myself okay i choose not to have something not to have it 
exactly so yeah, so so absolutely. that mentally mentally or psychologically i feel as if oh i am the one in control because i'm choosing not to have something if i feel right. it, if i tell myself oh i can't have this then it's almost yeah. as if i've ceded control to the the food item to, and as soon as food, you tell yourself absolutely. or you tell your mind that you yeah. cannot do something your mind will right. rebel against you and do exactly that like if i tell you do not think of a pink elephant your mind will think of a pink elephant oh god you got a pink <laughs> elephant in my head now uh, yeah no but that's absolutely absolutely right it's it's about sort of uh, fi- finding that balance for yourself uh, i think to use the all the take all the negative uh, vocabulary out and replace it is very important Uh, to to yeah. empower yourself with the word I choose not to, as opposed to I cannot. Uh, yeah. These are the the small sort of uh, tools that you could use to sort of uh, reorganize uh, the way you think about these things, and it's incredibly yeah. powerful. Yeah, yeah. You 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 briefly yeah. mentioned that uh, you know, of course. abstinence might be needed in some cases uh, especially if you might yeah. be obese and you know like uh, the the medical advice oh, given you to you medical, yeah right is is to stay away from certain foods because of medical reasons uh, so the articles the reports in the recent past suggest that india is currently going through an ob- obesity epidemic and if mm-hmm. things remain unchecked then this epidemic might actually uh, might actually become an, a, a pandemic as well might become pandemic. much worse right so yeah. so if there was something uh, if there's like one piece of advice or maybe a few things that you could tell indians in terms of what what they should change about their lifestyles like things that they should yeah. be doing or could be doing yeah. or things that they should refrain from doing yeah. what would you yeah. say not just in terms of exercise but yeah. maybe in terms of diet as well yeah i think you know going back to the issue and uh, it being india's you know uh, the india problem i think is more than uh, more to do with you know the infrastructure and the institution uh in general in india when we want to hang out or just what is you know uh, any sort of extracurricular activities what do you have to do? like for example when you live abroad you can go to the park you have yeah, multiple yeah. um uh, avenues to sort of like for for your recreational activities in india it's all surrounded by food right like uh you want to hang out with your friends so let's go go out to a restaurant let's go to a pub uh and then of course india loves to celebrate and we celebrate with food so food is such a, a key sort yeah. of yeah. um uh, element to our culture even right. and infrastructurally uh, we don't have other avenues um to sort of like just hang out and not have food or drink involved in that um but having said that i think and i'm looking at the youth uh, of uh, in, in urban india now there are more uh, options and i i do see kids planning to a day in the park just to sort of like Uh, hang out with their friends um so i would say that you know plan activities that are not around food uh and like i said in india it is harder than it is in the west where there are options you can go paintballing for example here um, i know there are a few options to do that but it's far few and far between but to find activities that don't involve food that involve you know physical activity whether it's just you know going to the park like i said down the road those are the kind of changes that we need to look to uh, incorporate in our lives uh, because culturally like i said we are a, a society that really enjoys and celebrates our food uh, and you know and it reflects in every every aspect so yeah it, it is uh, uh, an added effort for, for us to sort of move away from that culture and start, try try doing something different So so look I mean the 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 simple solution that came to my mind is that yeah. in addition to doing all these sisters in sweat uh, events yeah. that you keep organizing you have to start yeah. brothers in sweat as well such that we can bring <laughs> all our indian brothers and sisters together and do cycling you, and football and what not You know Anubhav I have a sisters and misters game night happening every okay. uh, week so we we try to include the brothers as well but uh, you know the the reason i started sisters and sweat not yeah. brothers and sweat is <laughs> obviously because i you know where it came from the idea even was you know during those two years at ernst and young uh, in the, in the corporate world after um, with the work hours i noticed a lot of the boys would get together to go play a game of football or cricket yeah. quite often i would just join the boys and i was one or two uh, two girls within this group of boys so i think the opportunity for girls to to play or or you know spaces for women to play i thought were barely there uh, and of course this sisters and sweat was a bit of an accident in that i didn't plan it because of this reason and i just chanced upon um uh, this this huge gap in the market 
but i definitely recognize that boys continue to play post school and college girls for some reason dropped out and my whole sort of mission with sisters and sweat is to get the girls back on the field so so that makes complete sense to me but i'll tell you what does not make sense to me the fact that i haven't received an invitation to the sisters and misters <laughs> meet in greek that you have well here you are this is your personal invite to to, to be part of sisters and misters <laughs> whenever brilliant, it's happening brilliant. whenever it's happening <laughs> brilliant i'd i'd love to attend one you know sometime in the near yeah. future or the distant future uh, shweta sure. so we we spoke a lot about working out exercise i'd love to shift mm. the focus a bit uh, to uh, the diet aspect mm. of things as well you know the one thing the whenever i look at you in addition to of course your very elegant haircut the one thing that really 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 strikes out something i marvel at is your chiseled jawline I am honestly <laughs> in awe of how chiseled your jawline is. What's what's like a hard substance? Is diamond considered to be a hard substance? I would. It's the hardest. Yeah, I substance, think it is, right? Yes. The hardest substance. Yeah. yeah. I swear your jawline is so chiseled that you can easily <laughs> slice through diamond as well. That's how chiseled it is. And I'm pretty sure, in addition to you working out consistently for ten years or ten years plus, yes. playing sports and whatnot, <laughs> being being disciplined when it comes to your diet is also a big contributor. Yes. to not just the yeah. chisel jawline but the abs that you have perennially all year round 24 7 365 so so we we'll, we we'll, okay. we'll, i would yeah. love to first find out what your diet looks like you know what are some of the best yeah. practices that you follow yeah. when it comes to diet and then we can get into some of the nitty gritty some of the specifics as well sure as far as diet is concerned above i have you know uh, i've had a, a a great journey as far <laughs> as that is concerned to figure out what works for me uh, of course in my growing years i never thought about food as a thing at all like whatever came on the the table ate and it was just a a, a self sustenance thing food um and you know then we i go off to university and that was there was one year that i gained a lot of weight and it's uh, you know there's a term for it freshman 15 i think right when yeah, you go off yeah. to university yeah. you uh, there was barely any activity in that first year i, did, I didn't really uh, even go to the gym i don't think um i was in university there was a lot of drinking the food was complete junk food and i gained a lot of weight in that first year and after that first year i got so uh, mortified with the fact that i could gain weight because you know when when it, when you never think about you know weight gain and things like that as a child because you're very active and you're eating a fairly clean diet at home uh suddenly you look at yourself in the mirror and you don't recognize yourself it's a very scary experience it was for me because i i didn't think i had the capacity to put on weight it was never something that even crossed my mind um and then when that happened i completely went the other direction where i was like i'm not Ill. like you had uh, expressed like you just said i cannot i will not touch and a lot of foods became out of bounds and i was an unhappy person to be honest because i really loved food i've realized that later on in life but um <laughs> and then i came back to home to india after university and just started eating my uh the food at home that was cooked at home stuff that my body was used to and i you know started exercising moderately again and you know and it's i would say for the last 20 odd years i've been pretty much the same uh uh in terms of my weight and uh, all of that and i I really don't overthink my food uh and I I would have to say that the food that's cooked in my house and I think most uh, uh homes cook pretty nutritious meals it has you know uh, uh you know the, the vegetables um you know of course carbs um if you're a, a non-vegetarian uh, say you have your meat on the table uh, and if you do moderate exercise there you there is no need to overthink it I will say yes there's a lot of you know celebrations that happen in india like i said which is surrounded by food and the food can be quite uh, heavy but the the you know the community that i come from we don't have too many celebrations so that that helps <laughs> but um yeah i think for most for the most part just home food and if you can think of a south indian meal for uh, for lunch for example it's a little bit of brown rice two three vegetables um i am i'm a big meat eater so it's either chicken fish mutton whatever pork um of serving of that um and yeah i don't really sort of restrict myself in any way i have i have to say in this journey that i was talking about have understood how certain foods feel after i okay. eat them yeah. and mm-hmm. let's assume i loved having a packet of chips in the past i didn't but as a crude example now when i have 
one too many chips it doesn't feel good it just doesn't like like i said i was talking about this connection with my body um this is part of it to understand you know it feels good on the lips but 10 minutes later once it's in there it's just you're feeling a bit sluggish you know feeling good you know and now that i'm keenly aware of the aftermath of having something that's really unhealthy i just quite put off by it so i might have one or two but i know that okay that's as much as i want to put in my body so yeah that's i think it's pretty straightforward there's no sort of magic recipe or anything like that yeah yeah good good on the lips but heavy on the hips <laughs> very heavy on the hips <laughs> <laughs> you 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 know you, you talked yeah. about you talked about uh, freshman 15 which uh, yeah. uh, for those who might be watching who might be unaware of this is this phenomenon or yeah. this common phenomenon where during your freshman year because you end up getting carried away with all the drinking partying eating the late nights the the stress yeah. eating and what not you end up uh, uh you typically end up gaining a lot of weight and so 15 pounds yeah. is like maybe the average amount that people gain and i still That's remember right. during my freshman year in college this was in yeah. 2011 you know so this is like a walk down memory lane after after the end of my freshman year there were so many people who who went through this yeah. freshman 15 and i used to tell them boss these are rookie numbers i went through freshman 35 <laughs> freshman 35 <laughs> You know, fifteen. Fifteen is a rookie yeah. number. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I watch all my cousins go off to university one after the other, come back in their yeah. first year, and, and be unrecognizable as well. Yeah, uh, friends, and yeah. I mean, it is a phenomenon. It is real. I went through it yeah. myself. Uh, having, you know, you know, despite having this, you know, great love affair with sport, you yeah. go to college and you you just go nuts. <laughs> I mean, it takes you yeah. and and. If there's nothing i mean you go through it it's fine <laughs> yeah i i think i think you you said you go through it but i think the difference between you and me at least is that when you had that freshman 15 experience at the end of your freshman year it it sort of was a wake up call for you and then you were oh, like absolutely. you know what i have to be mindful of my it, of what yeah. i'm eating how much i'm training and what not for me i'll tell you what happened from freshman 35 it went to sophomore 50 to junior year 75 to senior year 100 i oh, like it, yeah. it kept on getting worse and worse and worse yeah, and worse yeah yeah I mean, I'll tell you a uh, personal story. Like my brother, he was very, very overweight from uh, I would say when after he went off to college, till uh, you know for a good ten, twelve years. And suddenly, I and I can't tell you what it was. And I was here, you know, pursuing a career in fitness instruction. I'd be like, "Listen, bro, like you gotta like, <laughs> you know, you're, you're ruining my reputation here." <laughs> But you know, nothing would. Not, the boy loved food, and he loved the worst food, and. he did i mean he play, he enjoyed playing sport but obviously the eating was way more than what he was burning uh but one day he just woke up and he was like i don't want to feel like this anymore and he just cleaned up his diet and again he's not overly restrictive i would say and he's not uh, you know a uh, beast when it comes to his activities but he just cleaned up his diet and he went back to being in fact he got completely ripped, ripped up and i was like <laughs> excuse me i've been working for so many years to get to here and you know within like a few months he was like in in top shape so yeah it takes for each person the journey is different and maybe yeah, you have to yeah. go through all your years of college yeah. being you know unhealthy for me it took that one one year to just have that wake up call uh, but i think you know at the end of the day uh, and this is for people who um, you know have a brother or a sister or a family member or a friend that you feel is unhealthy There's only so much you can do as far as pushing them towards, yeah. you know, it yeah. has to come internally if you yeah. want it to be um, something that they will sustain. Exactly, and it's it's very interesting. And you mentioned this, you know, it's very interesting how different people have different triggers that actually prompt them mm. to embark upon yeah. their respective fitness journeys. Like for me, like throughout college, like I can count on. on on one hand how many times i went to the gym you know throughout college yeah. uh yeah. Ev- like i i joke you know throughout college every single day for me was a rest day and a cheat day every single day throughout college was a rest <laughs> day and a cheat day and even after graduating yeah. college you know spending I, i was about i was into my second year or i was just about to start my second year in in the the corporate workforce after having graduated college and mm-hmm. I was living the same college lifestyle, the very extreme lifestyle. I was working at Goldman yeah. Sachs in New York, so I was yeah. very busy working eighty hours a week, right. and then then using alcohol, marijuana, cigarettes as like yeah. forms of escape. Yeah. You know, just to like pick me up, to to numb some of the the pain that I was going through working. working around the clock uh, and then sure. but even that didn't get me to change my lifestyle of course i kept thinking that oh anubhav you aren't in college anymore in college it's still fine you can do it but you're getting older mm-hmm. now like you have to take care of yourself you can't be living such an extreme lifestyle then i ended up uh, meeting uh, like a, a girl in new york and i developed mm. the the biggest the biggest crush on her and i was crush madly her, yeah. in love with her maybe infatuated yeah. with her yeah. and 
Yeah. I feel I felt that you know I could do everything beautifully, like you know, like smooth yeah. talk, impress her and whatnot. But I just yeah. felt so insecure about my body that body. I just couldn't yeah. take like the 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 next step, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And so that yeah. was like the wake up call for me, and I was like, you know what, I cannot be dealing with this insecurity, uh, especially yeah. as it yeah. pertains to this crush of mine. And so yeah. Yeah. I started. <laughs> Started hitting the gym, and you talked Absolutely. about this earlier on in the conversation. When you when you take those steps, of course, you know the changes won't happen overnight. But when you start taking those steps and you're doing so consistently, then when you see yourself in the mirror, then you see positive changes in your body. And once you see very positive changes that you've brought about, that are very visible and tangible, that you brought about as a result of actions that you've taken, you've taken. It's such an empowering feeling. Feeling yeah. and it's so 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 addictive, and that just Absolutely. made me want to go for more and more and more and more. Absolutely, I keep saying, you know, giving your from for me for from a client's perspective, I always want to give my clients a sense of agency, uh, in terms of okay, what do you, what do you want? What are your goals? Okay, and you know how long, uh, you know what is what is the time period within which you want to achieve those goals. I'm not sitting there and dictating to them what their yeah. goals should be and stuff like that. That's something I want them to work out on their own, give them a sense of agency, um, so then they own it completely. As opposed to okay, now you know, come into the gym, you have to do this. This is the goal we have. Then you sort of feel detached from that goal or whatever uh, you're after, right? So giving yourself that sense of agency and then completely like owning the the results of that effort and feeling you know. Um, uh, a sense of you know, rewarding yourself for it those are all important uh, elements of sort of living that healthy lifestyle over a sustained period of time yeah definitely and i had a yeah. couple of closing questions for you but i want to be mindful of time as well so let me know whenever sure. whenever um, your uh, you, you don't have more time yeah the 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 body positivity movement uh, you know it's it's mm-hmm. become slightly contentious uh, now mm. and you know, look it's it's a very noble endeavor on paper it's a very very noble endeavor and of course like people who might be overweight who might be fat right mm. aren't necessarily aren't lesser people but i think oh, it's safe to say that they're definitely less healthy people but do you think sometimes yeah. the 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 body positivity movement might be masquerading that that uh, harsh truth that look all else being yeah. equal the heavier yeah. you are the more overweight yeah. you are the more unhealthy your uh, your, well, your your body is your physical appearances Well I would say um that might not entirely be true there are obviously uh, conditions where people uh, live a very healthy lifestyle uh, for example the help in my mom's house uh, she uh, is uh, she's got a hormone uh, imbalance and I've I, you know initially I was working with I was training her uh, we took her to an endocrinologist to figure out the right diet for her she's now on Nike training club app uh, she's obviously very active with housework through the day uh but she is obese right um and i would never want to say that you know she's an unhealthy person or ever have her think that she's an unhealthy person because she's doing everything to stay healthy but you know uh the medical condition is such so uh when we talk about body positivity to uh, in, understand that there are people like uh my mom's house help that you know uh, and other people of course who are you know doing everything right but still are overweight on the scales um shouldn't then make them feel lesser and make uh, you know people in general think they're unhealthy because they're not uh but you are absolutely right there is a whole coterie of people who are unhealthy who are uh, you know um and when i say i mean unhealthy is i mean it's it's, it's a personal thing right i'm not mm-hmm. judging you because you're unhealthy yeah. but yeah. for the sake of yourself if you want to have a good qual- if you want to have good quality of life etc it's important that you are healthy and it's important that we don't promote you know uh okay, you you are overweight and let's say you are overweight because you're unhealthy mm-hmm. it's important for us to at least um uh you know motivate such individuals and inspire them to try and live a more healthy life for right. their own right. sake more right. than anything right and i think you're absolutely right in where this body po- positivity might then give such individuals uh less of a motivation uh to want to live a more mm-hmm. healthy life yeah. right and that's yeah. my only sort of issue with it fully acknowledging that there are people who might be overweight who are living a very healthy lifestyle and doing everything but still can't shed the weight and those individuals certainly should not feel bad uh, about their physical state of being beautifully put beautifully put yeah. so dairy and uh, and wheat 
in the in the form mm. of roti uh, big components mm. of the traditional mm. indian diet what's mm. what's your take on both on dairy as well as wheat so i mean i don't have a take on either to be quite okay. honest uh, i think you know as far as diet is uh, concerned and uh, 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 fitness of course to a large extent is very individualistic for me i just don't do well with uh, wheat like i feel right. bloated and it just doesn't work for me uh my brother for example does really well with wheat you know so it's an individualistic thing i think you know you have to understand what your body uh, can break down and digest well and if it works for you it works for you both i would say are not in any way bad dairy or uh, wheat uh it really depends on the individual and everything in moderation like we said moderation is our Uh, a golden uh, key here to all all the problems and my final question for you shweta mm. please please help me help me understand this because you know i'm trying to wrap my head around this for for quite some time now but it's still not comprehensible to me what the hell is animal flow what the hell is animal <laughs> flow i see honestly honestly yeah. with you with due respect to people yeah. who do yeah. animal flow and who knows i might yeah. just like you know very soon after this conversation just, hop on shot. the animal yeah. flow bandwagon but yeah, yeah. gyms gyms have started looking like zoos you know how in the in the in the in the in the in the corporate workplace you you celebrate bring your kids yep. to work day i swear i feel <laughs> these days at the gym it's become bring your pets to the gym day every single yeah, day yeah, yeah. all these ferocious movements and what not yeah, that absolutely yeah. astonish and baffle me but tell me what is animal flow sell me on it and who knows come tomorrow i'll take back my words okay. i don't need to sell you on it but <laughs> just uh, in a nutshell um, i i'm also a level 1 certified animal flow instructor because for me it's important to try everything out there yeah, um, yeah. and when i uh, sort of um, uh, come to a, tra- a personal training session one of the things that i try to do with every session is to change it up to you know um uh keep the motivation levels high to keep uh, to break the monotony and and you know including a kettlebell uh movement as part of the workout including one movement of animal flow uh including uh trx workouts all of that is i think important for me to know as a personal trainer and to use it you know it's in my bag of goodies and depending on what i know my client will enjoy or bite I, i'll i'll pull it out from time to time uh animal flow is uh, well a a form of training uh it's uh, obviously a body weight training um it's great to develop your mobility strength um uh, and uh, just endurance uh, power it can train for different various aspects of um uh, your physical ability right of course it's not the only way to do it you could you know train for those exact same things using another form of training uh the fitness world is famously gimmicky right uh, one day this thing is trending and this is not to call animal flow gimmicky in any way of course but i'm just saying that we need something new every uh, every so often to keep us excited to get us excited and i i've seen this across various you know training formats like the, it it becomes super hot for a period of time and everybody wants to try it and then yeah. you know the next thing comes up having said that i think you know having gone through level 1 and i chose not to do level 2 uh not because you know i didn't think it was worth it or anything i just thought you know this is good enough and i understand the benefits of this form of training and i use it when uh, i need to in, in my personal training session sometimes i do it myself uh but uh, yeah like i said it's 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 a form of training some people really enjoy it and it's like anything else maybe i you really enjoy playing a particular sport and that's what you're inclined towards I find a lot of people are inclined towards doing animal flow. Some people are inclined towards doing yoga. So yeah. it's just one of those things, Anubhav. And I would say try it, uh, and yeah. you might enjoy it. But at the end of the day, I think you know these things are also best taken, you know, uh, for what they are. It is a form of training. Uh, it's got its benefits. uh i i i don't like being sort of cultish about anything whether it <laughs> yeah. comes to my weight training my sport or you know uh and i think these things can go down that path though and, and it it seems like a little bit of a cult movement right now but there are benefits in there uh and maybe it, it, you you'll want to be part of the cult i don't know <laughs> You, you know in, <laughs> in in animal flow isn't the only certification that you have i think you've got a a, a plethora of certifications i was looking at your instagram bio as well and you have so many yeah. technical certifications that i swear when i was going through them they were so technical sounding that i felt that i was reading greek it was in english that i was reading <laughs> but but yeah. i just you know i just think yeah, it goes to show the, long, the expertise yeah, it's been that a long you have journey yeah it's been a long journey and i and i think i i mindfully wanted to 
uh, get certified in various disciplines uh you know for for uh, you know in order to be a good personal trainer i think it's important to understand all the various disciplines of training the, the science behind it and then pick and choose the right one for your client and that might differ from client to client obviously uh and you know what what works for me as well uh in my personal journey as a trainer beautiful shweta you know you said you said it's been a long journey but i'm pretty sure you're yeah. just getting started you've barely scratched I the surface so. <laughs> especially in light of the fact that you're getting younger with each passing day so you definitely have time on your side as as always when i say as always i've got a sample set of two because this is the second conversation that i'm yeah. having with you second yeah. long form conversation that i'm having with you but uh, yeah. but i've enjoyed both of them thoroughly thoroughly uh, again thank you so much for being so gracious with your time and the next time i'm pretty sure you know we've done two virtual conversations let's make yes. it a point to do a third conversation in person you know so if i'm in bangalore Absolutely. i'll hit you up if yeah. you're in mumbai hit me up Done. and i i look i'm not just being facetious when i say this i still look forward to getting the sisters and misters meet and greet invite theek hai wo bhej dena i told you you got the invite you don't need it anymore so whenever Chalo. there's a sisters and misters game happening in the neighborhood please make sure you you're there for it that has made my day my week my entire year <laughs> all right great Brilliant. Brilliant. thank you Thank you so much again Shweta good catching up and uh, yeah look forward to catching up a lot more in the future Cheers thank you have a good one this was really enjoyable i look forward thank to it again Thank you likewise the pleasure is mine take care bye bye, -bye.